Welcome to Soon Product Development, where we help brands elevate from start to finish. Last week, we broke down Elwood and their most popular teas that have gone absolutely viral on TikTok. This week, we break down a very, very notarized brand in the industry, ASRV. ASRV has been around for a pretty long time, I'd say over a decade, and they used to stand for Aesthetic Revolution. However, they have kind of changed their way that they've marketed their brand and they've kind of done a complete brand makeover. And now they stand for all sports, recreation, versatility. ASRV has two flagship stores, which are in California. Us being in Houston, Texas, we're going to order online and review the outfit that we bought. All right, so starting off with the landing page, personally, I am a massive fan of their content, I will say. I absolutely love it. It's so simple, but it stands out. From the menu, when you scroll down, their product photos are absolutely gorgeous. I do love a good, like when you hover over, that it changes to a model, still makes it look aesthetic, so. So unlike the other brands that we've kind of reviewed, which are more of the mainstream type of brands like PacSun, Zara, right? Those are, I would consider mainstream. ASRV is more of an e-commerce type of brand and they've just now started to branch into flagship stores. As you see here, the minimalism is very crucial for ASRV. They have one photo, no scrolls, no videos on the actual um, landing page. Which is also different because it takes up the whole entire screen, as right. you see. So okay. most people don't. It's like a small banner page where you can already previous, preview the, the collection below it. And another gripe that we had with all of these mainstream brands is that most of their websites were very inconsistent with product photos. As we just scroll onto the main page, you can kind of gather that this is their newest collection. They kind of just lay everything out, but it's very, very aesthetic in my opinion. Very um, aesthetic, very consistent, and they you can tell that they think about where their products are also going to fall on the landing page, which is a super small detail in retrospect, but when you're building out a website, it's actually very, very crucial when you kind of see everything displayed on your page, so. Okay, so another gripe, maybe one gripe that I have with their um, landing page is that it might be too many collections. Um, so they have their biggest, newest collection. I would have probably just stopped there and then just given that the attention, but now they have other collections of which is, this one is called the 3D Light. Awesome, awesome photo. This is so cool. Um, cool. And then they kind of give their, maybe their best sellers, right, an overview. And then they have another collection. Maybe this is like a restock, so they're kind of trying to highlight uh, maybe their bottoms. Um, yeah, really, really cool. I, I'm a huge fan of the consistency of flat lays and then the quick views are all the actual product. So they're not showing a full body, they're just showing the product itself. Yeah, they have a lot. They have a lot of different, I think it's different because most websites that you would go to, the banner page would kind of be that scrolling, like here's what's new, here's what's in stock, here's what's whatever, but they do like a run on page of everything and every collection that they wanna highlight. So different, a little bit too long, but also like very aesthetic at the same time and yeah. simple. And, and just like a common theme we go with, most e-commerce websites should be a maximum of two to three colors. Mm -hmm. You can tell they've done a very great job. All the text is one color, um, very legible, easy to read. And their sale is called surplus sale rather than just sale. So it's not really just in your face. It's kind of like a Lululemon, we made too much. Really huge fan of that. So let's go on to one of their products. Full zip, right? Really clean aesthetic. Uh, very simplified, right? They have four photos for each product. Kind of highlights everything that they have stitched on it or just the product in general, like the drawstrings from the hoodie, nice cuffs. It's just very simple, clean, not like too crazy. I, do, I don't like when people have like 10 photos of one product. Yeah. I think it's very, very excessive. So anywhere from four to six, I feel like is a very good range, especially if you can kind of get those close up pictures too, so. Yeah, and I think, I think they've done a great job. When it's a hoodie, they're only showing the hoodie. So they have a mm -hmm. flat lay, they have a detail shot, and then a front and back shot. So let's kind of go to the pants. Same concept, right? They have the flat lay, a front back shot, and then they have some detail shots on the top, showcasing the pockets, as well as showcasing the bottom and the hem of the mare. Oh, what are these? These are super cool, actually. 1906. Perfect. Well, 
We have actually selected an outfit, so we're going to show you exactly what we bought. We're going to break down the products right now. Let's get to it. Let's do it. All right. So first off with the box, we got four items in here. And first thing you kind of see is a little welcome card that kind of tells a story with ASRV. Huge fan of all the details. All right, so we got four items, which makes for a complete fit. We kind of wanted to do one outfit because they don't sell women's clothing. They only sell men's. So we got the Tech Essential Crew Necks. We got the Tech Essential Sweatpants that are the straight leg. We got a ripstop insulated puffer vest and we got a Tech Essential T-shirt. <laughs> All right, so first item that we have here is the crew neck. Let's open it up and let's find out what it costs to make. All right, so kind of breaking it out out of the package, I want to say that this is a probably a cotton polyester. And judging from the inside of it, it kind of looks like a hybrid of a terry fleece, which I kind of love personally because it gives the warmth and coziness of the fleece, and then it also gives the durability of the terry. Okay, so breaking down this crew neck, I want to say it is not your traditional crew neck just by looking at it. The body is pretty oversized, as you guys can tell, and I love all of the detail work that they kind of put into the, um, the hems. They kind of fray it on some of the edges, but they don't frame, fray all of the ribbed. Some of it's cut to kind of give this whole aesthetic um, distress type of vibe, but they're not going above and beyond with the distress. So huge fan of that. You have your embroidery logos on it. And I want to say that this crew neck, this is just a guesstimation. We don't have a fabric cutter. So I want to say that this is around a 375 to about a 400 GSM uh, Terry fleece. Very, very nice. And one thing that is a huge gripe for me when I have crew necks is that there are no pockets. And with this crew neck, there are pockets. How cool is that? That's kind of cool. giving this extra um, cozy type of feeling and you kind of have somewhere to put your hands because normally when you're wearing a crew neck, you don't have that um, luxury. Uh, love this extra ribbing on the sides. It gives an extra panel and it adds to the sophistication of this garment. Huge fan of that. And one thing ASRV has always been known for, in my opinion, is the product development specialty. They very much focus on the detail work um, that normal garments would not have. So this crew neck actually costs $138. And I'm gonna break down exactly how much I think it costs to make. So with the logoing, they have two forms of logo. They have the, um, the heat press silicone little tab on there that kind of defines the item code of the product. And they also have the embroidery logos on the cuff and the chest as well. So nothing too crazy, right? They're, they're very much a minimalistic type of streetwear. I love what they kind of go for. So trims and accessories, I would probably highlight anywhere from that two to $4 mark. Now with ASRV, they are actually not made in China. I believe this garment is made in Korea. So that adds to the premiumness of the cost. Um, so two to $4 for the trims, the detail work, including the hang tags, the woven labels, um, and the care labels as well. Um, I think this garment is nothing special in terms of the cotton. So I'm gonna go as far as to say that the material is maybe around that three to $5 range. So if we're going on the high side right now, we're at that $9 cap. Labor is probably a little bit more expensive in Korea versus China, but cheaper than the US. So I wanna add on maybe additional $4 um, for the labor, bringing a grand total of this piece to around $13. Um, $138 would kind of equate to 10 and a half X the cost of this garment, which is crazy high. But ASRV has always been known for the branding piece. So their, their price points are always a little bit more premium. So if you feel like it's worth it for you, by all means, go ahead and purchase this garment. But personally, I think that this is completely overpriced. Okay, next we have this tee. Um, it is actually a mesh back cotton tee. So let's get into it. Just from the start, I can tell you that I don't like it. The reason being is this collar is super untraditional. Right, we have the single top stitch and there's no reinforcement here. So it makes this collar super, super thin and it gives it like a weird scoop neck 
kind of vibe. Um, it's also very, very thin. I mean, it's breathable for sure. Um, doesn't really give it like a very tech feel. It's just kind of like a very light, light cotton. Um, I would say around 180 GSM. So let's open it up. It is a mesh back. So we have that detailing panel there. So it does give it that athletic wear more kind of vibe rather than a relaxed, cozy fit um, as we were looking at the, the crew neck before. So honestly, you can even see the, t the two tone of the whites is not, I'm not a huge fan of that kind of wear. Um, it just gives it a little bit of a, I, I don't know, it's kind of tacky in, in, in my sense, like doesn't really complete the outfit in, in any kind of way just because of the two tones. And the reason there's two tones is because the, this is mesh and this is cotton. So all of, even though it's technically a white color, um, they're not gonna be completely the same. They have the silicone print here of their logo. And is there anything else on the front? Yes. And then a silicone heat press print there. So let's break down how much this garment would actually take to make. So kind of coming into the branding pieces of this product, you have your heat transfer here. You have a heat transfer on the back as well. Um, this is probably a 3M reflective logo, so I kind of like that. It adds to the sportiness of the product. You have a heat transfer um, back label here on the actual neck just to kind of show the sizing. Um, very simple in terms of the branding pieces. I would say no more than $2 at your cost. Um, the hang tags maybe add another 20 cents or so, so right around that $3 range. This is, as Dakota stated, a 180 GSM. I think I can agree with that. This is a 94.6 cotton spandex, and then the back side is a 88.12 poly spandex. So nothing too extravagant. It's a very simple construction. The only thing they kind of added was this panel back, right? They kind of added an additional seam to it. So obviously it increases the cost by adding more panels. Again, like Dakota stated, I'm not a fan of the lack of ribbed collar. It kind of is a little bit odd to me, but I can understand why they did it. If it's your style, it's your style. Um, the actual fabric, I would go as far to say, is maybe around that four to six dollar range. So we're stating from the top side, it's right around that nine dollar and twenty-five cents. The construction of the garment, again, very simple, top stitch kind of everywhere, um, nothing too extravagant. So I want to go as far to say four dollars for the labor cost. So right around that thirteen dollars and twenty-five cent range to make this garment. Again, it is made in Korea, so I give it the benefit of the doubt that it is a little bit more expensive. Um, $68 is your cost, so right around that 5X multiplier. Pretty standard in the apparel industry to be right around that 4 to 5X. Um, again, their marketing is crucial. They spend a lot of money on that. So, you know, $13 to acquire a $68 tee. Personally, I think it's a little overpriced. Um, I wouldn't pay $68 for a cotton garment, um, especially one without a ribbed collar, but what do you think? Yeah, I absolutely would not pay that, and this just honestly wouldn't speak to me even online just seeing that. So um, if it's your style, it's your style. Like Daniel said, this is not our style. Next, we have the sweats that match the crew neck that we just reviewed. So it's about, it's pretty much the same material, that cotton terry mix. Um, this seems a little bit more fleece, but I guess not. It's a little bit, pills a little bit. Pills a little bit. Pills yeah. a little bit. Um, they have these nice flat, sort of long drawstrings, which I do like. I don't like them excessively long, um, like other essential brands do, but a little bit of length to them really goes a long way, so that's good. Um, they have the stitching embroidered there, very minimal, but speaks enough. And they are a straight leg sweatpant that we got here. Um, very minimal branding at all, not, really none at all. Then we have a zipper pocket, which I kind of like. It's hidden so that no one really knows but secure enough to keep all of your belongings and everything. So that's really nice. See if they have a back pocket and they do. Very minimal, sleek, does its job. And then they do have the silicone heat press label um, that we've been seeing on all of their garments. Oh, and one more stitching logo. Um, this waistband I feel like is a little bit short in my opinion. 
Um, I would like personally a thicker waistband and usually like that triple stack waistband mm. um, is my personal favorite. But then again, this kind of gives it that light, airy kind of feeling um, and a little bit maybe more techy and sportish to go to the gym, feel a little bit more comfortable rather than super, super high end, um, luxurious kind of feeling. Right now, we're gonna get into it with Daniel to see the breakdown of this and this garment and what it would take to make. Okay, so breaking down these sweatpants, just like Dakota stated, this is the same material as the crew neck. So um, before I kind of go into the brand breakdown of the actual like cost of the garments, I kind of want to highlight a few points. I love the duality of these sweatpants personally. Um, the single kind of stack drawstring or waistband for me is in my opinion, multifunctional. Um, I, I really do admire the things that they've chose for these sweatpants because I, I do think these accessories kind of go a long way. Um, you have your flat yoke here that kind of brings a different panel. It's highlighting this high rise type of fit and feel because you can tell the back rise and the front rise is a little bit long, thus giving it more of a relaxed feel. Um, you have a back pocket here, you have your straight leg here. So again, this is a multi-purpose pair of sweatpants in my opinion. You could go out in it, you can lounge at home in it, and you can work out in these sweatpants in the winter and fall. Um, but yeah, I think the branding pieces are pretty simple, right? You have your embroidery pieces in two different locations. Um, you have your silicone heat transfer that seems to be their signature on all of their products. And you have some, you know, hidden nylon zippers. Oh, it's only on one pocket. So oh. you have a hidden nylon zipper here that's a branded piece. So nothing too crazy. Love the black that they kind of gave it. Gave it a little bit more of a sporty, edgier vibe. And then as you see, they gave a open flat pocket, which kind of brings a more casual fit and feel to it. So again, they're really detail oriented and I personally love that. So material, we're gonna go right around that six to $8 range. It's a little bit more material than the crew neck, so a little bit higher. Um, the fabric itself is really, really nice. I'd also like to add um, the trims and accessories. I wanna go right around that $3 range. Nothing too crazy. Your embroidery pieces are pretty cheap. Um, most expensive pieces are probably these and then the heat silicone transfer. So we're right around that $11 range. Labor for these are a little bit higher, right? It's a bigger piece of garment. You have additional um, panels here like the yoke, a little bit more detailing. So I wanna go five to $6 range. So for this product, I wanna say it's right around that $18 range to kind of make. Um, again, these are a pretty thick fabric. The hand feel is relatively soft. The terry fleece is pretty durable, but also gives it that cozy winter vibe if that's what you love. Um, but these sweatpants are $128, right? So $17 versus a um, $128 retail cost, I think is a little bit high in my perspective. I think that $60, $70 range would have justified this product. But again, it goes all down to branding and what you charge. But personally, I think these are a little overpriced. What do you think? I also think they're a little overpriced, but as you said, they are multifunctional. So it kind of gives that two, three in one type of feel to the sweatpant. Right. So it's a little valid. Um, interesting that it is a little bit more costly to make than the crew neck. Um, and then also the details on the crew neck are a little bit different here. Like there's no distress or anything like that, even though it kind of can be a set. So I thought that was interesting. Um, but overall, I don't think I would personally pay for it, even though I do really enjoy this piece. All right, so in my opinion, this jacket is the star of the show. When I was building out this outfit, obviously I wanted to still maintain that neutral vibe, that gray white, but the black really does kind of put things together. And then with this piece being a completely out of the ballpark in terms of the style, I think it's perfectly fitting for the season. So let's break down the gillet. The gillet. Yeah. All right, so first off, what I'd like to say is that this is a rip stop nylon. It is a much more premium type of nylon and it gives texture. You guys know I'm a huge fan of texture when it comes to my jackets and honestly all apparel. Um, it really does give a utilitarian vibe to it. So again, right off the bat, I wanna say I'm a huge fan of this jacket, but let's go down further and break down this product. So we kind of come down to this premium down. They're using a European origin down that's inside of the jacket. So they're stuffing it with a lot more premium garments um, or premium fill. So this adds to the cost. I'll kind of wanna go into that a little bit later, but 
European origin. Love the detail work. Again, ASRV has always been known for that detail-oriented vibe. Um, let's break down this jacket. Wow, so right off the, right off the stop, um, I wanna say, not a huge fan of Velcro pockets, right? This is a more expensive jacket. Um, we're gonna go down that a little bit. Um, but I would have kind of opted for something maybe like a, um, like a button clasp, like a quick clasp button or something, just to give it more of that premium look to it. You have your zipper teeth here, the more of the heavy duty zippers. Um, love that. And then they have a, another piece back here that's really, really cool. This is a, another piece of nylon. I think it just adds to the waterproof, water resilient type of effect to it, but it gives a different texture. And of course, the color pop is really, really cool to me. What do you think? This is, it's almost like a sparkly. Yeah, it's kind it has, of reflective. It has a sparkle, yeah, to yeah. it. So I love, I love that texture. And it gives a good break in what you have here and right. the color without being too vibrant. Love that. Breaking down into the internal body, this is probably a nylon um, type of liner, and you kind of give this jacket a lot more of a different type of texture, fit and feel, and then honestly, the finish is really, really unique to me. So let's go through the cost and see what it takes to make this gillet. Okay, so first off, you have your heat transfer. Um, this is very flat, it kind of fits into the fabric. Um, this will probably stay on for a very relatively long time. It's not really gonna peel because it's not really stressed. I wanna say the ripstop nylon I'm a huge fan of. So the down, I wanna say, probably adds right around that eight to $12 cost. $12 on the high side just because this is maybe a European origin down. Um, one thing I am a very huge fan of are these re-re zippers. Re-re zippers are a much more premium zipper and is sourced in the European region. And so for this zipper track itself, I wanna say is right around that $10 mark. So we're right around that $22 mark with making this garment. Um, the ripstop nylon is a super simple nylon, right? They're kind of plentiful. Um, but I do love that they chose ripstop. So I wanna say the material itself is right around that $10 mark. So we are right, right around that $32 region. Um, again, you have your sparkly nylon that Dakota pointed out. So I wanna say this is probably another $2 to make um, or to add to the cost. So $34 is kind of where we're at right now. Personally, I would have opted for a snap button closure. So that's a that's an ick, in my opinion. Um, branding pieces, pretty simple, maybe $2. Um, so overall cost, I think it takes to make this jacket is right around that $34 to $35 range. This jacket is $198. And in my opinion, this jacket is highly justified for the price. Um, overall, I think in the beginning when I was purchasing this jacket, I thought it was a little overpriced. But further breaking down this product, it is, in my opinion, very justified. What are your thoughts, Dakota? I absolutely agree. I mean, as you pointed out, this m most of the garment being sourced from the European side and, and with the final finishes and touches, I think the only two real things that we would change is the, or the Velcro here. And I think my last one would be kind of maybe doing something a little bit different with this print arrays maybe or something. Uh, yeah, like something that gives it a little bit more pizzazz without being too crazy, um, I think would give that overall like elevated feel. Um, but 10 out of 10, this product I think is definitely worth it. Now that we've broken down all these products, let's go and put these products on and let you know how it fits. All right, so we were gonna try these on, but we realized that we actually ordered an XL in every product. So we need to find ourselves a fit model. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Hopefully there's someone on the screens. All right, so first off, we're gonna ask Derek what he thinks about this outfit and if it is his style and some things he may change. Derek, what do you think? Overall, I like it. Uh, not my normal go-to or style. Like I wouldn't, you know, gravitate toward these um, if I'm just shopping by myself. So um, <clears throat> the the pants, these I'm wearing an XL top and a bottom. It's pretty oversized, so I could have gone with the large, and I think it would still would have fit pretty pretty well. Uh, the vest is super nice, like you can tell it's pretty high quality. Uh, on me, like I said, it's not my normal style or go-to, so, you know, visually, it kind of looks weird on me 
uh, through my perception, but everybody else says it looks good, so I'll take their word for it. Um, <clears throat> without the vest, it's pretty much just like a basic sweater top and bottom, so um, yeah, I mean, overall, I think it's pretty good. The quality feels pretty nice, and yeah, I don't, I don't really have too many complaints. Yeah, so <laughs> first off, we're gonna go through the pants, some feelings that I may have. We went with some Travis Scott lows, and I think these shoes definitely do pop with the outfit. Obviously, you have the traditional neutral tones of the heathered gray, the white, and the black. And you have the shoes with the white, but the caramel kind of color, the, the beige kind of really sets it off, in my opinion. Um, the pants sit super well on Derek. I think the, the inseam is like, in my opinion, the perfect vibe for him the front rise and the back rise doesn't look like it's uncomfortable. Personally, I think it is a 10 out of 10 fit. Dakota, what do you think? Yeah, I would have to agree. I love that it's it really does sit perfectly on the back of his shoe. So even if he said like he would feel more comfortable in a large and he's wearing an XL, these do fit him how they were intended to, I believe. So he's just not used to yeah. oversized products and, and stuff like that. That's not really his style, but it does fit him quite nicely. Right, so if you look at the style of ASRV and that it's supposed to tailor towards people who work out. As you see, there's no puckering on the pockets. The, the hips sit really, really well. Like I said, the inseam is perfectly well. Um, and then Derek, how do the waistband fit you? Is it pretty high, high waisted or is it mid waisted? So that's, that's, <clears throat> so that's why I said I would go with the large because the waistband's a little big on me. I had to tie it to, to make it you know, sit where I want it to sit. Otherwise it probably would be dragging a little bit lower so that's really the complaint of uh, the sizing so I feel like it's kind of oversized and we ordered uh, true to my waist so that's why I would size down right so on to the next piece which is the crew neck Dakota what do you think about the crew neck the crew neck also sits perfectly I love the drop shoulder that we have here again it is he could have gone large for a more true size but still slightly oversized um, but I do love the drop shoulder and then it kind of elevates well with the with the vest um, I love the detailing the detailing just stands out so much to me on the cuff the distress it's it's a 10 out of 10 I love that it also it seems like it would be light and airy because of that fleece um, terry it material is. that it is so it's not very very dense um, and then he also has that cool uh, mesh top underneath so it kind of flows very very nicely Right, so we do have to remember that this is a cotton product, so the way it shrinks, it will kind of, in my opinion, will shrink perfectly. Normal kind of like range that we go with with cotton products are that it'll shrink two centimeters across the board. Um, so obviously with these sleeves being completely oversized, I agree with Derek, he could have gone with a large and the sleeves might have been a little bit more fitting. You can tell with all of the extra material here, it, it's a little bit loose, right? So with this oversize, I think this is a true to word oversize. Most companies who say oversize is just looser fit, but this is, in my opinion, a true oversize. And as we were reviewing the products um, and we kind of ran through some of the detail work that ASRV has kind of laid out for us, I think with the distressed hems on the actual wrist cuff, with the embroidered logo, I don't know what that says, but I'm certain that's in Korean. Um, all of the logo pieces, all of the extra detail definitely do kind of elevate this product for a more premium look, and that's exactly what ASRV was going for. So I think they did a great job on that. Uh, the crew neck for me is definitely a 10 out of 10 as well. I'm a huge fan of the way it sits on him. So the third piece we have is the t-shirt. And now obviously this is a layered piece, and one of our feelings with this product was the actual hemmed collar, but I actually can take my word back and say that without the hemmed collar, it actually sits so well on him. Um, and it kind of brings a different texture to the look. So there's a ribbed and then a non-ribbed kind of look. So if you were to order like a crew neck or maybe a hoodie and this shirt kind of sat right on that neckline, it would be a perfect accent piece. Um, I think if that was ASRV's intended usage, I think it is very well executed. Um, the overall length of the shirt is not crazy long. Um, I think it's right around that 29, 28 HPS. So it's not like a super baggy look. It sits right outside of that crew neck, so it's a perfect layer piece. Dakota, what do you think? I have to agree. I don't hate it as much when it's covered up, but I do, I'm still not a total fan of the single stop, top stitch. 
Um, I think just knowing what it looked like before, it kind of looked a little tacky and weird, but it does sit nicely on Derek. Um, it does kind of flow with the crew neck as well instead of that double rib that we yeah. see usually popping out of crew necks and stuff like that that people wear. So here, I think it's presented really, really well. As a single piece, I would 1,000% pass. Yeah, the durability piece of, of the collar may be a little bit challenging, right? Because it comes in contact with your skin, and as you wash it and as you dry, it ages. And so I'm very interested to see how this will actually hold up. Personally, I don't think it'll hold up, and that's why most traditional t-shirts have a ribbed collar, so that extra durability piece can kind of help. The last piece we have is the cropped vest, which is they call a gillet. That is more of a European term. I'm a huge fan. I, I gotta say, I think this is a piece that I would not normally go with either. And as he kind of put it on, you can tell there's a very different type of cut than a traditional um, gillet or a vest. Uh, the armhole is definitely lower than a traditional vest. So very well executed. And as he kind of lays this on, I can kind of understand why the pockets and why uh, the trims were chosen. It gives it a really, utilitarian sportswear type of vibe and it very much complements the font that ASRV uses so very well executed um, this vest you guys know from from the previous part of this video I'm a huge fan of it um, I think it it's so different with, with normal people who wear layered pieces through the fall and winter they're kind of just going with a traditional hoodie or maybe an overcoat over this this uh, crew neck but I am a huge fan of this piece and you can tell by the thick down that they use and the nice ripstop nylon, this is definitely gonna keep you warm with those winter days. I agree. I think that this piece by itself and on top of other pieces as well is a standout piece. Um, I agree that we, what you were saying is all of those simplified kind of choices that they made to, to kind of put this garment together, just like the, the Velcro and stuff like that, don't really make too much of a difference when it's on. Um, they all flow really, really nicely together. I think that those were just like our pieces picking it apart. Um, but I think that it, it puffs out just enough it's oversized just enough to complement the rest of his outfit. It is a very, very statement piece, so you have to have a certain kind of taste and style for it to kind of complete your outfit. Obviously, this is not like an everyday wear. This is you know, something that you would pick out to truly, truly make a statement that day. Um, and I think Derek wears it very nicely. It fits him well because he does work out and he has you know, a broader um, stance and build, so this, whole entire outfit, especially the gillet, makes it a 10 out of 10 outfit. So Derek, <laughs> Derek, overall, after all of the comments we've kind of given it and you kind of trying it on for a little bit, what would you rate this outfit from one to 10? I mean, y'all hyping me up. I feel like, I feel like I'm a 10 in this thing, you know? So um, I would probably give it an eight personally, just for, like Dakota said, it takes a certain like style and preference per the individual to pull something like this off. And I think I would just give it an eight just for my personal style and preference. Right. It's not something that I would normally wear. I'm not one to typically wear vests with anything. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think overall it's a, it's a great outfit, just not me personally. Last thing I'd like to add with this entire outfit is including shipping and taxes. It comes out to right around that $600 mark. Um, personally, I think $600 after breaking down every single garment piece by piece the cost it takes to kind of make everything I definitely don't think $600 is worth it. It's a little bit too expensive for my taste But I do think that it is extremely durable, right? It's gonna last you for a long time to to come so depending on your budget and what you're kind of looking for if you want a durable piece that'll last you many seasons then your cost per wear goes down but personally $600 is a little bit out of my price range that I'm looking for, especially with minimal basics like this. That concludes today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and joining. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and comment what you think we should break down next.